podcast. Welcome to This is the Place, brought to you by We Own This Town, where we discuss the ever-growing and shrinking bar and restaurant options here in Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Matt, and across from me is no one. That's right. This is going to be an interesting episode. We are doing something a little different today. Uh, Actually, a special episode because we have a great interview coming up in just a bit. But, uh, you know, because of busy schedules and whatnot, it being January, it's been a crazy year so far. Uh, I am in the studio by myself at the moment, but that is a-okay. Mickey will be back with us soon enough, and you will hear Mickey's voice in this episode as he is doing the interview. But anyway, yeah, so what's been going on? Hopefully you've eaten at some great places. Uh, If you want to tell us about it, then you can reach out to us on Instagram or Twitter at This Is The Place. And of course, that is T-H-A Place. As we have discussed before, let me know any new restaurants, any new bars, any, uh, you know, little uh, nooks and crannies of uh, restaurants that uh, you want me to talk about or Mickey to talk about. Today, we are going to have an interview with Mike Wolf, who is opening up a bar here in the next couple months and they will discuss that in the interview uh, the name of the bar is chopper but first we're going to do a little housekeeping we're going to talk uh i'm just going to talk about some openings and closings that have happened already in the beginning of 2019 so first off is some closings i really the only closing that i'm i'm going to talk about is one that has been a staple for decades and decades and probably a lot of people haven't gone to this place it's called Bobby's Idol Hour and it was in Music Row and it definitely was more of a songwriters neighborhood bar I went there a couple times haven't been there in years but it really is kind of a end of an era with Bobby Idol's Hour closing because you know it was a staple for songwriters for locals in that area to go and hang out and it is going to be some nondescript office building now, apparently. So it's really sad to see that go. Really bummed that another, you know, Nashville institution is closing its doors and making its way for something that maybe doesn't have the, uh, the history or culture uh, that we like to hold on to here. But, you know, hey, we're moving forward. That's all right. So... Anyway, bid adieu to Bobby's Idle Hour and got a couple of great things to talk about in terms of what our opening. I know we've talked about the Slow Hand Bacon Coffee Shop and mentioned Pelican and Pig. And it looks like Pelican and Pig is finally open. Very excited to hear about that. And as we've discussed before, it's uh, you know heavy on uh, the meat, and so it's some good, perfect winter food. You know, they I really I haven't been there yet. Very excited about going to try it. They have uh, a snack section, a shareable section, and then a dinner menu. A couple things that grabbed me was the Nashville hot deviled eggs and the rabbit and dumplings with biscuit gnocchi. I'm a huge huge, huge fan of Noki. So looking forward to going there and trying out their new stylings of, uh, of meat friendly food. Next up is, I think, I don't think we ever talked about Little Octopus. Maybe we mentioned it very briefly. It closed down and then it opened up just in the past couple weeks as bar otaku i believe it's the same owner and a couple episodes back we talked about a new uh, korean style bar called babo and i think this is going to be a little similar it's it's japanese but it's a casual japanese pub the thing i do like about it is it has two separate happy hours which i don't know if anywhere else in town does it has a happy hour from 4 to 6 p.m then a happy hour from 10 to midnight Uh, And I believe that's every day. So, you know, nothing wrong with getting a good deal on a drink. So, but uh, check that place out if you're into Japanese design, Japanese art. Just, I saw some of the pictures that looked amazing. I think it's a pretty big space. All sorts of Japanese theme art running the gamut from uh, traditional to 
new Japanese art. So anyway, that just opened up Bar Otaku, which is in the Gulch. And then also just want to mention Butcher and B. I don't think we've done a deep dive into that, but I went there the other day and I just wanted to shout out a couple things that I had. One was the charred Colettas, which I believe is charred kale. And it had, uh, it was mixed in with uh, a barbecue steak sauce, some chopped apples and pickled cherries. The thing that I, I loved about it, and my wife, she said, man, this is really, really good. It, it brought me back to, again, it reminded me of my childhood and it reminded me of Christmas, me of, of Thanksgiving, because there is a certain pie, southern pie, a lot of you might not be familiar with it, called mincemeat pie. And it is what it sounds like. Traditional, uh, traditionally has suet in it, I believe. Uh, you don't have to make it with meat anymore, but it's a very tangy, savory pie. So you don't necessarily think about it of it as a dessert pie. I always had it as a dessert. My dad loved it, have minced meat pie with uh, a little ice cream. Anyway, this charred kale of butcher and bee really, really kind of w- was a throwback to me and it reminded me of the, of the minced meat pie that I still eat that my mom still makes a pie for us every Christmas uh, just because me and my brother my mom one of my brothers are the only three in our household that that uh, will eat it everybody else thinks it's disgusting including my wife but uh, who knows you know maybe if you go uh, have uh, this charred kale of butcher and bee and then uh, you're at a party and there is mincemeat there which might be a rare occasion you'll try it and uh, take a liking to it Uh, try something new anyway just wanted to mention that real quick so also just read about a something that will be opening sometime I think probably later on in 2019 Uh, and this will bring us back around to the interview is uh, Sean Brock of Husk is going to be opening up a restaurant in East Nashville. There's already been a lot of hype around it. I think it was just announced uh, the past week or so. And it's going to be an Appalachian-style menu. I guess he grew up in uh, maybe Kentucky or Virginia. I'm not sure exactly. And it is going to be a huge uh, two-story restaurant unlike anything else in Nashville. I think that the downstairs is going to be a casual dining room upstairs. He's going to have three different areas. I think there's going to be a tasting menu. uh, So a little more um, high end, maybe I'm I'm really not sure, but uh, three different areas. One that has a screened in porch where you can have some snacks and then a dining room. And I think the dining room area is going to be more really small where the kitchen is, where there will probably be maybe a, um, a kitchen bar where you can sit and have your food and watch the cooks work their magic, and also a living room area. So uh, that's on the upstairs and then downstairs is going to have a casual dining room area. Uh, it's also going to have a lot of, from my understanding, a lot of uh, southern folk art uh, it's going to be that styling. Uh, so, you know, really, uh, really excited about that to hear that he's doing something else here in Nashville. And of course he is, I think, like I mentioned of Husk. And so that brings me now to talk about the interviewee today that Mickey talked to, uh, a little while back. And his name is Mike Wolf. He has been around in the scene for a while now, worked at several restaurants. You know, of course, they'll cover all that uh, in the interview, but he ended up, you know, his last place he was at was Husk. And it's just funny. It shows you how kind of a small world it is. Um, Once him and Mickey did uh, the interview here at the studio. I know Mike had been kicking around the idea of doing a podcast for a while with him and his buddy, and his buddy turned out to be this guy, Kenneth, who I have known since college. I was actually friends with his older sister. I kind of knew him as her little brother in college, and but I knew that he was in the in the bar business for uh, for for a long time, and I would see him, uh, you know. Occasionally, and then just to find out that him, uh, Mike, and Kenneth now have a podcast called Liquid Gold on We Own This Town, and it just really just shows you what a small world it is. So, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy the interview with Mike and Mickey. It is 
Uh, it's a great interview. It gives some really good insight to the bar world and specifically the bar world here in Nashville and what Chopper is going to be all about. So I hope you enjoy the interview. And I think uh, I think next episode we might be doing dive bar number two. So look, uh, be looking forward to that. And here is Mickey interviewing Mike Wolf. This is the place. Um, I've got a very special guest here, uh, Mike Wolf. What's up, man? How are you doing? It's good Great. to see you. It's great uh, to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. One and, of my and favorite regulars. There, there's ever. A lot, I mean, I, I like. I prefer on. the term semi regular. Semi. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll drop off and you won't see me for seven, eight months, and then yep. I'll pop up again. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know, bartender client privilege. You know, I'm not gonna say how many times I've seen you. Okay. I'm not gonna say if I've seen you recently. You that, know? <laughs> that that's what one wants. <laughs> it's ironclad. <laughs> So, Mike, for those who don't know you, uh, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. What? Uh... Uh, so, let's see. I've been here in Nashville about almost eight years now. Came from Denver, Colorado. I uh, was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. Grew up there until I was about five or six, five and a half, something like that. Moved to Denver. My dad worked for the Charlotte Observer. Oh, cool. In Charlotte. And then I uh, got a job at the Rocky Mountain News in Denver. So he was uh, he wrote features and sports and all kinds of different stuff there for many, many years. And so, yeah, we moved out there and grew up out there. Went to school at CU Boulder. Yeah. And I uh, met my wife, who's from Nashville. Wow. And so that's, you know, my first trip to Nashville was, I think, 2002. Ah. Uh, um, so you've seen some things here. the freeways were just clear. <laughs> <laughs> so you've definitely seen some things here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's been crazy. So first off, I am very fortunate to have you here because you're a part of probably one of the most anticipated openings this year that people are just kind of chomping at the bit to get to and it's it's called chopper yeah. so i am very happy to have you here to talk to me about chopper yeah thanks for thanks for having me on yeah. we're super excited it's uh this is a tiki bar tropical libations haven that we've been working <laughs> on uh for you know, for a long time. Uh, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna admit that I've I had a big conversation uh, some episodes back about whether or not to, uh, if if someone really wanted to be attached to the whole tiki thing, because I did not know that there are people who feel very passionately about what a tiki bar is, and uh, I guess you're embracing that. You're you're good with that. Yeah, yeah, we're good with it. I mean, we're taking, uh, we have our own story to to tell. Yeah. Um, the more you get into the tiki culture and everything, you know, there's no way to, to do it. Like you can do an authentic French restaurant. You can do an authentic Southern food restaurant. Yeah. Doing an authentic tiki bar is a little bit strange to say because it was made up from the beginning. It was a story. Don the Beachcomber, he he actually did sail the, the South Pacific Seas. Mm hmm visited a lot of amazing islands, met a lot of amazing people. But when he came back to Hollywood, he had created all these drinks himself. And yeah. they weren't, they're not drinking Mai Tais in Tahiti. Yeah. Uh, they might yeah. be now, but they weren't <laughs> in the 1920s. They weren't that okay. And so it, it's a really cool story. It's a, it's almost like a Hollywood movie. Wow. And the, the tradition of it has been going on for almost 100 years now. So we're excited to be a part of that and uh, to add to that culture and so um, who's the team of guys putting this together? Yeah, so we've got Andy Muma, Barista Parlor, and, ooh, uh, Coffee, Coffee Aficionado. Extra, aficionado, I yeah. like that. Um, wow, okay. Um, and Bryce McLeod from Isle of Printing. Um, incredible artist. Incredible artist, wow. incredible human being, uh, yeah. great, you know, a great asset to the city. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> I've heard people say that. that you know, that's nice. He's like that's a, nice. like a untradeable asset for <laughs> Nashville. You that, know? That's a true statement. He's like that's the, a true statement. He's the like, LeBron James of yeah, the yeah. art community. Uh, so. so so I have actually walked by and got to take a peek into the place. It looked like a amazing puzzle that was being put together. The detail just uh, I, I it what whenever the the the, the time frame is going to be that you open it's going to be well worth the wait. Because I, it looks like you're putting a lot of effort and detail into putting this place together. I mean, I was just, I was really blown away. And again, it's located in East Nashville and a great space. 
A great space. Yeah, we're stoked. Uh, we, you know, we've just got this whole other story to tell. Bryce, uh, one of the uh, main sort of uh, people in his universe, Hiram Kanish, business magnate. He sailed all over the world. And when he was sailing through the South Pacific, he came upon an island. He was on a boat called Chopper. And that's where we got our name. And he came upon an island in the South Pacific that was, uh, as far as we know, that had never been discovered before, Island X. We've seen it on some maps as Island X, so that's what we have uh, taken to calling it. And we have uh, excavated different artifacts, uh, robots, uh, remnants of an old robot culture. And so we are displaying that in the bar. Wow. Uh, and that's what a lot, that's what Bryce, Bryce has sort of been the head research honcho yeah. to take these artifacts and kind of make them make sense. Wow. And we're, we still don't yeah. know if this was a language. We're still unpacking it all. That's oh, why it's wow. taking this long. Uh, you know, it that, takes a long time. Hey, it, it, you know, <laughs> great things take time. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I want to know, well, what have you been doing up to now? I, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. And I, I know that you, you've been a part of Nashville scene. Food and drink, that's what we talk about here. And I know that you've been part of that scene. Uh, so c- catch me up on what, what you've been doing lately. Yeah. So the past year has been very interesting working on Chopper and working on different things. Um, I started working on a book. What? So that's a, exciting. A book? Okay. Yeah. 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 So I'm, uh, I'll be handing that in here in a couple months. And hopefully that's out late next year. What is this um, book going to be about? So this is going to be cocktails, uh, some gardening things, some uh, sourcing, you know, connecting to the natural world around you. Yeah. You know, I wanted to kind of inspire people. And uh, yeah, just talk about, you know, it's really not hard to up your drinking game and really enrich your life. And through again, cocktails. You mentioned gardening and I was kind of laughing earlier. I'm kind of like, what, what does that mean? I, I know I've, I've been on the other side of the bar and I do remember my first experience being a, a patron <laughs> at, at Holland House. I think you were there. Mm-hmm. And I remember being asked <laughs> what I wanted to drink. And the question was, would you like something off the menu or would you like something out of my back pocket? And yeah. out of that back pocket came a tattered several tattered note cards with recipes on them for drinks. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'll take something on one of those cards. Yeah, yeah. And I was made this chamomile-infused beverage that I could only get there and nowhere else. Right. And I talked about it so much that my wife at the time was trying to figure out how to get all these things together in order for me to be able to make this drink at home, which was impossible <laughs> because... It had very super things in it that mm-hmm. you guys came up with. So, oh, yeah. how does a garden come into play uh, when you're behind the bar? Yeah. So, a lot of it initially started at Rumors East over on the east side, which is no longer there, but we had a great garden there yeah. that we could use. And it was a smaller place, and there was just more kind of growing out there in the spring and summer that it just it made more sense to go out there and use that stuff. Or, you know, rather than not. And yeah. uh, and when I got to Husk and helped open Husk here in town and was there for about four and a half years, yeah. and there was a beautiful garden on site. Um, that was one thing that Chef Brock was adamant about. It needed to have a garden mm-hmm. and that we needed to be able to use it. And, and, you know, mostly year round, we were able to use things there. And I think what really got me kickstarted and, and inspired was, like I said before, that, you know, working with the chefs and saying like, oh, uh, well, I'm going to go out and clip this uh, this rosemary right here. I'm going to clip this time. And it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> or I need some cilantro. You know, No, you don't. No, they you made don't. you grow your own? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that's kind of how I got into it. Wow. And, you know, it just grew and grew literally. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. How did you get involved in uh, bartending? Um, So this goes back to when I was in college and I worked at a place called Kay's China in Boulder. Mm -hmm. Um, That was an amazing Chinese Vietnamese restaurant. I delivered food there in the fall and winter and it was a music venue. Mm -hmm. um, So I would play shows there and they would have all these amazing shows. It was one of the only places you could see like some of the noise bands going on in Boulder and then some of the reggae bands. Um, It was just a really cool open environment. Mm -hmm. And then in the spring and summer, it would turn into one of the most popular, craziest bars in town Mm because they had this huge rooftop area that could fit hundreds of people that would only be open during the warm months. And so it was like two different places one there was about five seats at the bar that was in the main restaurant 
and it was just a very chill place a lot of delivery so that's mm-hmm. what i did in the fall yeah. and winter and then i got into working in the bar when it was crazy and um started bartending up on the roof and i mean that was just amazing i would be up on the roof in this little shack yeah i would work the daytime i started out working the day and it's like may in boulder school's winding down yeah i'm up there playing whatever music i want <laughs> yeah you know i'm playing like velvet underground loaded yeah and you know making drinks for people yeah. and we had uh, our specials were four dollar doubles five dollar triples and you can imagine how much trouble people got <laughs> yeah, into that, that sounds like a lot of trouble so yeah. it was it was nuts and we were doing it's actually i'm kind of coming full circle now because we had tiki mugs there mm-hmm. and we had scorpion bowls yeah but we were not doing anything correctly mm-hmm. or we were not really making we weren't really making uh anything yeah, uh, yeah we were you know but we were lighting scorpion bowls on fire for college kids I and, you. <laughs> you know I, I haven't seen it here as much but you know back then people would say like you know you'd get a big shareable punch bowl and people yeah. would go one two three and then they just take it all down and then, yeah um <laughs> So, all right. So when you arrived here in Nashville, I would say that the whole uh, the uh, craft cocktail scene has changed quite a bit and evolved. And early on, it sounds about sounds like about the time that you got here, we were just kind of getting into that here in town. So what's like one of the first drinks that you're able to master that kind of like, hey, I can do this, or something that maybe was your signature drink. Is there anything here like that? when I got here to Nashville? Yeah, yeah. I think what uh, so when I got here, Patterson House was was a huge deal. I'd known about Patterson House. Mm-hmm. I had seen it in the magazines and yeah. was really excited to check that out when I first came here. And uh, but at the time, my wife was working at Vanderbilt. She still works there, mm-hmm. and we had a VW Bug. Uh, that we've still got it needs a little bit of work now, but <laughs> that was that was a car that I was kind of driving to work and everything, and mm-hmm. so it became I didn't necessarily want to take that car on the highway. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to find somewhere to work on the east side. Yeah, and found out about Holland House after after moving here. You know, got in, got to know Jeremiah a little bit, and yeah. he took me he took me in over there, which was awesome. And I would say it was Daiquiri. Um, yeah. That was at that time that was. Uh, Let's see, it was summertime, and it was a very tiki-inspired menu yeah. that was going on at Holland House. I don't know if you remember, there was a palm tree on the front. Yeah. We, were, we had yeah. the blender mm-hmm. in the back. Yeah. You know, <laughs> somebody would order a, a blender drink. We'd yeah, be like, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, <laughs> but everybody had their daiquiri, mm-hmm. and everybody was, you know, it's amazing how that drink has kind of taken on a life of its own here in Nashville because I've gone to, you know, you'd go to 308 and they'd have uh, their their version of a daiquiri. Everybody mm-hmm. has these different versions of daiquiri. Yeah. And to me, it's amazing that that drink has really, it just is not going anywhere. It's never it's going a, it's a anywhere. Staple. It's and a, it's it's three ingredients, but uh, everybody would put, the, put their own little spin on it. So, and I still remember Jeremiah's the JB DAC. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a good one. Yeah. But yeah, that's probably the drink that, you can do amazing things with that mm. little template. Okay, all right, I, I like that. Uh, unfortunately, there there are no. Uh, you can't make me a drink today, but um, right, I'm, I'm working up to that. Next time, I'm like, hey, bring what you can, do what you can. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right. So the other question is, a, a lot of people ask me. So where do you go in town when, say, you and your wife? have a moment, kind of go out and do something. Is there somewhere in town that, that you like to go to that you you enjoy? Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been to, so for my birthday last year and then for our anniversary this year, we went to Peninsula. Oh. Um, so I got to throw a shout out to them because that place is amazing. Yes. Um, yes. And I love those people. Yeah. And there's just so much talent, you know, among the, the few folks that make that place work. So uh, I love that place. Yeah. And, um, I've been to Peninsula, and I really, I, I really like Pen- Peninsula a lot. The thing that kind of surprised me the most was there's a disco ball in the kitchen there. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and that's nice. Yeah. Um, and recently they start, they've got a happy hour that's going on too now. That was kind of their thank you to everybody who'd been uh, actually going there. I, yeah, I do great. love Peninsula. I think it's one of the most romantic places you can go. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually had a beef heart there, so cool. that was quite an experience. So yeah. They do amazing yeah. things there. And uh, and then recently we went to, right down the street, Lyra. Yeah. Uh, yeah Harant. Yep. yep. Uh, doing his thing over there. He's been, you know, he's wherever he's been, whether it was Etch, whether it was Rumors East, yeah. whether it was um, some place that Jonathan Waxman has in <laughs> Midtown or something. I don't know. Uh, he, he He's always doing his Lebanese 
Mm -hmm. uh, Middle Eastern food. Now he's finally got his own place. And so a a lot of people are excited about that. And it was amazing. We went there a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um, They're getting a lamb every Saturday and doing a bunch of dishes with it. um, Wow. uh, For the weekend. And so, yeah. That, that's on my it. list. I, I, I have not been there, but I'm definitely going to go check it out. So what do you think is missing in Nashville? Uh, they're, they're, the, I mean, the, the restaurant scene continues to change and evolve here. But um, I always like to ask people that question. Folks that have been here for a while and then folks that have moved in. What do you think is missing? Whew. You know, that's a tough one. I guess uh, there's not a ton of sushi. I think that's one that, that gets thrown out there. I don't know if you you might have a, a secret place that I, I don't know. Everyone about, always does. But I had a there was a guy that was the uh, sushi uh, master that local folks knew, and he went on away. So there's there's not really a place. I don't know of one. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's I, I think there's just so many talented chefs, talented cooks in Nashville that you'll probably see a more uh, sort of peninsula catbird sea that are, that's a little bit more uh affordable or just just sort of dressed down a little bit more uh, i think yeah, you'll see some yeah. more of that um because there's so much talent here but i don't know i can't say there's much missing i mean there's yeah. great indian food there's great mexican food yeah, yeah um i suppose you know like going back to i worked at case china and boulder there could be you know i'd love a place like that yeah, yeah. chinese food vietnamese food drinks yeah. music that would be that would be really cool but you know i'm sure somebody's gonna hit me up and say well have you been to this place well, well, I, this, I, well, I hope know. so that, yeah. that's why i like to have that conversation so what what do you want people really to know about um chopper i think that uh we're trying to what we want to be is something for the neighborhood something for the community have a great happy hour get people in the door um, not charge an arm and a leg for a good cocktail yeah. and uh, and really just uh, introduce them if they don't know much about it, introduce them to tiki culture and some of the classic tiki drinks. There's, you know, there's so many great drinks from like the 1930s, yeah. 1940s, 1950s. There were all these different styles of drinks that we'll be, we'll be showcasing some of those. And I think too, that people have said to me like, oh, that's great. You know, Tiki bar, that's great. That's kind of trendy right now. Mm-hmm. And that's, but that's crazy because, you know, great chefs always say, you know, tradition over trend. And I think that Tiki has, you know, it's almost a hundred year tradition. Mm-hmm. And so when you're a bartender, you're, you're a craft bartender, or you like to make cocktails, you eventually uncover the world of Tiki. Yeah. And the more you dive into it, it just kind of blows your mind that people have been making these drinks for so long and that a lot of what craft cocktails are now started with Tiki drink or exotic cocktails as they called them back then. Yeah. So yeah, there's a whole tradition and, and there's a long lineage. And so we just want to be a part of that and bring mm-hmm. that to, to the neighborhood and give something special for those people. Andy and I have both lived over on the East side mm-hmm. for a long time. Yeah. We both have been uh, going out and drinking on the East side for a long time. And yeah, I think we've got something to, to add to, you know, the neighborhood and the yeah, scene. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so how long? When, when is this coming? We're, <laughs> I, I, yeah. That seems to be the most popular question. Yeah. It's kind of like building the pyramids. I don't know. <laughs> um, I like that. You got to keep going. You got to yeah. keep going. Yeah. Uh, but uh, all I know, like I said, it's a beautiful space. It seems like an amazing puzzle that's being put together. And I, I can only imagine what it's going to be like to walk in when it's all put together. Yeah. It's going to be pretty incredible. I think puzzle is a good way to, to yeah. describe it right now because yeah. it's like when you put that puzzle together and there's those three missing pieces mm-hmm. and you're like, where'd those pieces go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's coming together slowly yeah. but surely. But I think, uh, you know, mid-January is kind of oh, uh, late January. Gotcha. You know, it's within reach, and we're just we're trying to get there. Sounds good. Yeah. So I've seen that you guys have kind of been making a little tour around. You've been doing various different things, popping up here mm-hmm. and there. What was that experience like? I mean, you, we, we know you're coming, but to have you to come up and, and just uh, make some drinks and just pop up somewhere, that, that had to have been a challenge. Yeah. It was. It's. Yeah, I didn't realize how much of a challenge it was going to be, but um, it was uh, very rewarding to see, you know, the first one we did – was back in late March at Nikki's, mm-hmm. and that was amazing. You know, had a great crowd come out, and people were really excited and really supportive. And it was just amazing to see the, the amount of stuff that we would go through yeah. on these. Yeah. You know, you're like bringing in two quarts of pineapple <laughs> juice, and it's just gone yeah. in a half an hour. You're like, what? <laughs> 
but yeah, it's it, the the prep for making these exotic drinks. It takes a while, and you you kind of have to appreciate that whole process and being in the kitchen and and spending time with a lot of these ingredients and letting them sort of uh, do their thing. But I think more than anything was the response that we got was so positive, and people were just happy. And you're like you're bringing joy to people, yeah, and you can see that, and that's why you know that's why you do it, and that. So that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is there going to be a signature drink uh, at a chopper? I don't think there'll be one. Um, a few? But yeah, there there will be a few. Yeah. Um, there was one that we did for a few of the pop-ups, the Catalina Cooler. Mm-hmm. That was uh, that was real popular Pisco drink with passion fruit. So that was an original drink that we had done. Uh, we were featuring at the first few. We we featured the Jet Pilot, which is one of the great classic tiki drinks, and then did a collaboration with Southern Grist on a Jet Pilot beer. So that was really mm-hmm. cool. I think right now at the tap room, they've got one of our collaborations, the Zombie. Oh wow! So they took the Zombie cocktail, yeah. one of the most epic, you know, and mm-hmm. dangerous <laughs> uh, <laughs> tiki drinks. Oh, I like that. Yeah, um, and they yeah. made a beer out of it, and so that's been fun. We'll do collaborations with them. We're going to do collaborations with Bearded Iris and a few mm-hmm. breweries around town. So we'll have some cool offerings for for people that like beer and, and Very things cool. like that. Very yeah. cool. Okay, so my my fear has gone away uh, about the whole tiki bar not tiki bar kind of thing. You've, you've dispelled some of my fear about all that mm-hmm. because I've heard that people are pretty serious about their tiki bar. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not a big Star Wars fan, but I know not to speak ill of it. Oh, or yeah. Harry Potter or what have you. Right. <laughs> I think right. it's that same type of thing. Uh-huh. So what would you say to someone that this is their first introduction to tiki, to the whole tiki culture? You know, I think that really the at the heart of it is it's it's an escape from reality. And <laughs> when Beach Bum Barry, uh, one of the preeminent sort of tiki historians, he wrote all the all the great books to sort of bring a lot of these drinks out from, you know, these dusty notebooks. Mm-hmm. And he's been writing about tiki now for about 20 years. And he came to Nashville and he gave a little uh, talk last spring. And it was great to meet him and talk to him, and because uh, we were we were rifling through his his book Sip and Safari back at Holland House, we'd be rifling through yep, that book yep, and yep. pulling out some of those recipes. And I think he really hit it on the head when he said, uh, "It's no shock to me that that tiki is coming back because you you pick up a newspaper and you look through it, and then you say, wow, I need I need to get away from this.' <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, and so nice. yeah, that that's yeah. why I think it can really it can really. Um, you know, be be a, a good thing for people. It's Absolutely. an escape. It's an escape away. It's a little vacation in a glass. And if you can't hop on a plane to Hawaii, that's going to take, you know, a lot of money and a lot of time. Come on in and we'll let your cares just fall away. That sounds that sounds great. Yeah. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, can't wait to have you. On that note, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what else can be said. Um, is there anything else you'd like us to know before we wrap this up? <laughs> I don't think so. I, w- I, I just have to say thanks for coming in. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we're very excited about what's around the corner, so I look forward to uh, checking out Chopper. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me. No problem. I, it, does your book have a title yet? Uh, <laughs> Garden to Glass. Garden to Glass. I like that. Yeah. Uh, we'll be looking for that also at some point. That's going to be exciting. But uh, thanks again for coming in. Again, this was uh, Mike Wolf, and I really appreciate you coming in. And I can probably safely say... That chopper is going to be, uh, it's definitely going to be the place. So look forward to uh, checking it out, folks. Thank you so much for hey, having me. Thanks for coming yeah. in, Mike. Thanks, Thank man. you. All right. That was a great interview. Uh, Mike, definitely a great, great uh, bartender, has a really cool restaurant, tiki bar coming out called Chopper. Be on the lookout for that. I think that's going to be coming out here within the next month. Definitely look forward to going there and trying some amazing, amazing drinks. But definitely check out his podcast, Liquid Gold, with Kenneth. If you haven't checked it out yet, they really give they, they give recipes for drinks. They have interviews with people in the restaurant scene, mainly in the bar scene around around here and beer great great podcast here in the we own this town family so great episode and just remember eat up drink up and if anybody asks you this is the place you'll want to be we'll see you next time bye
<laughs> I like forgot. I was like, what's the tagline at the end? 